We've got Carsten again from the Google Lunar PT Scientist. Yes. Yes. And we're going to talk about space electronics and what makes it hard. What makes it hard? Yeah, Flying so... electronics in space. It's not just launching them and the vibration of the rocket and everything else. No, we're not talking about that. Yeah, so uh, this is actually the easy mm. part, I guess. Um... Yeah, right. The easy part <laughs> is launching it and landing yeah, it yeah. and all that. Yeah, so, so, so when, you're, when you're talking about electronics in space, it's not like... Um, the ship knows, uh, oh, no, I'm in space, I'm, no, I will break, you know, this is not the point. The thing is that um, when you're going into space, you're, um, you're leaving the, um, the atmosphere, which, mm -hmm. uh, which is providing you with uh, sufficient shielding from the radiation environment that, uh, that the sun and uh, What the types of different radiation are there? So there are, um, so it depends on where you are. So if you're, uh, for example, if you are a CubeSat fan, then you know that there is the low Earth orbit, which is about uh, yep. 300 to 800 kilometers. And uh, in that, um, you um, you have the inner belt of the Van Allen belt. Inner. Yeah, and so okay. the inner belt right. is uh, dominated by protons. So they, um, you know, they, they make all kind of uh, crazy stuff. For example, so there, if, you're, if you think about space, there are two things that you have to take care of. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's called the total dose and right. uh, it's called the single event effects. Yep. This total dose is um, is something that um, total you know, dose of radiation we're talking. Yeah, about. exactly. Yeah, um, it's uh, you can think of it as a, as a gradual effect. So mm -hmm. you have your uh, NPN tr junctions, yep. and um, there are um, ions coming in, and they are manipulating the doting of the. Of the. They're interacting with the doping of the yeah, silicon. Exactly, yep. and right. and this leads, for example, to the effect that. Um, that your transistors don't uh, switch as fast anymore. Um, that you okay, so it starts to dis degrade the transistor's performance. Yes, right. And, uh, it does so. Okay. It does so gradually. Right. And How gradually are we talking about? Uh, well, um, can it be destroyed in days, depending on the feature size? Well, yeah, it depends on. Um, it depends on actually the, the protection that you have. So if you have absolutely right. zero protection, right. Um, so if, a board, so, if, so if you've got your Arduino yeah. board just flapping around in the breeze in space. Um, that's interesting. <laughs> I would have to check on how, how <laughs> right. quickly that would be dead. But um, the good thing about the total dose is that you can add shielding. Right. So um, what you're doing is usually you, you add some aluminum. Or if you want to go fancy, you, um, yep. you add some tantalum. How thick um, does it have to be? So this is the, this is the question. How thick has it to be to survive your mission? And this depends ah, on what your mission so is. So you can calculate all this, yes. and that have obviously determined, oh, I need an inch worth because I'm going into deep space for 10 months. I need... Yeah, exactly. So, but the thing is amount. that um, uh, an inch, for example, doesn't, uh, doesn't do much more than, uh, than half an inch. Got so it. it's, uh, um, yeah, yeah. it's the you know, first tens of a millimeter that helps you a lot. Yep. And uh, yes, you know, a millimeter is quite good. The diminishing returns. Yeah, and uh, one centimeter yep. is uh, if you want to go really fancy, you know. Got um, it. So, right. um, and so it depends on what your what your mission duration is like. Mm -hmm. So it's also the, so if you want to make a um, a five year orbit in Leo, um, yep. uh, then you can expect about uh, twenty kilowatt, which is uh, the right. unit for measuring the. Yep deposit dose in the uh, silicon and um, then you can uh, then you need to figure out what uh, what shielding you need to add to, um, get, to get to the that. point well, well you wouldn't want to design on the limit of that you uh, want to be yeah well yeah order of magnitude under is there a rule of thumb for that's uh, that's a good question you, you, you what your margin depends on what your margin policy <laughs> right. is you know if you so the thing is that if you want to um, you can you can be very safe and yep. be very expensive, yep. or you can be cheap and uh, do lots of stuff. So you can be Voyager one and two. Cost is no object. Apollo cost is no object. You know, let's just do it right and reliable. Yeah, exactly. Or you can go, ah, no worries, she'll be right. You yeah. Know, so and, yeah, but the know. thing is that, for example, this is a very valid policy that we are, yeah. for example, adopting. That um, uh, you say we want to do as many missions as possible. And uh, so, for example, CubeSat, uh, I think the price is about um, ten thousand uh, dollars per yep, one per unit. Unit, yep. Yeah, and so um, you can say, okay, well, no matter, I will fly ten, and there is a chance that after three years, uh, half of them are dead. <laughs> yep. And this could be a very valid, you know. They could and be perfectly, yeah. Because exactly. if you if you if you try to add the shielding, um, your mass increases and your size increases, and uh, you're and no then longer a CubeSat. Exactly, and yep. uh, so this is. 
this is a the a philosophy that you um, that you have to uh, you know think about yep. what your what your aim for the mission is. And uh, the total dose is uh, actually the, the part where it's where it's quite easy because you just you just add um, your um, uh, your shielding depending on how much uh, total dose your device can stand. So now is this something you get in the data sheet? Uh, well, not in the regular data no, sheets. No, but you can ask them for aerospace grade. Yeah, for you know, space for grade. space grade, for example, they they if you want to, tell you. if something is d space grade, they have to do some radiation testing and Got tell it. you the total dose. Yeah. There are, but there are also many, um, you know, many people around uh, the world that do some uh, testing. So it's for example, it's quite easy to get um, to get a mini um, cobalt sixty. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, thing Source. and put yep. it on it, and then you yep. you get a very vague idea of. Um, Right. Of how how well it goes, and uh, but you can also use a proper uh, radiation source and do yep. some uh, total dose testing for the mission duration that you're aiming at, and the uh, and add the shielding to provide the length. Um, Got it. Uh, stuff how like do this. they radiation harden the chip? You buy the normal version and you buy a radiation hardened version. What's the difference? <coughs> the paperwork. So the, the, um, the paperwork is that it? No, it's not. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> it's, it's because they've tested it it's, for like. It's a bit of a simplification, but. The thing is that um, but there's nothing physically different. Uh, it depends. Sometimes it right. is. Sometimes it's not. Right. Sometimes. Um, well, the obviously they've tested them and they've sorted out. That maybe this one is a good one. Well, they can't test it because it's fatal dose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but right. you, what you do is you take um, um you, you take one waiver. Wafer, bombard half of them and then. Yeah, well, uh, half would know. be very generous. Right. <laughs> I guess. Okay, yeah, you bombard uh, a, a yeah. few of them. Yeah, you take like uh, like a data. significant sample size, yep. like five to seven, for example, and you um, then you do some radiation testing with it, and then you have a very rough Good. idea of uh, what the status of the other ones is. And then uh, you know, if you if you're talking about proper uh, proper space grade stuff, um, then you also um, do hermetic sealing packaging, you know, with right, uh, of course. With, uh, all the fancy stuff, you, you add some shielding and uh, do all the fancy bits and uh, then you know you have a chip that uh, will um, will definitely yep. work uh, in a radiation environment uh, up to the total dose that you're um, supplying. But also it depends on the on the process that um, mm. that something is manufactured in. So some... I was so going to say, feature yeah. size makes a huge difference. If you're working, if you're going to mm. leading edge FPGA at 20 nanometers or something. This is this is where it gets very interesting. Yeah. The feature size does not make a huge it, difference. It doesn't make a huge difference. No. So, but for example, what it uh, what it's so. But if you so if you're talking about because you mentioned doping before, yeah. which comes in the process technology, not just feature size. Yes. Yes. But the thing right. is that the, if you want to, for example, um, build at a smaller process, then um, you need to uh, have a tighter control over all parameters. And so you know this can um, this can add to it. And for example, if you look at some of the uh, single event effects, which we come to in a second, mm -hmm. then you see that um, um, an in a, a smaller process does not lead to a higher single event upset rate, which means bit flip essentially. But uh, interesting. Coming back to the total dose. Yeah. So um, this is um, this is, for example, uh, influenced by how thick your layers are. Also, if you are talking about you know fin fat technology, you know it's mm. uh, the transistors are made entirely different than. Yep. And uh, if you have a of bipolar course. process, yeah, if you have a bulk, seam, if you have bulk seamers, if you have a silicon insulator, um, this all comes into play uh, yep. into what your total dose is. And sometimes, uh, sometimes it's really just that one batch is bad, uh, mm. whereas another one could be pretty good. We've got the total dose, which can slowly kill your chip. Yeah. Oh, well, which you sorry. can shield against, which is which you can thing. shield it against. Um, oh, in in, in which thing. ways? There's. So you can you can uh, our foil. Uh, you can our, add, uh, aluminium. Is there any other materials that work better? Uh, tantalum is one of the preferred ones. So you titanium. use titanium. Uh, okay. Tantalum. Tight. Uh, wait, is it tantalum? No, wait. Uh, it's a German accent. Uh, I would have to look it up. What's it called? Okay. Uh, right, but there is a material that yeah, is. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there's, uh, so it's a comp usually it's used in a composition with uh, aluminum, and so you have uh, a, little, uh, a little layer of. Uh, the other with the one and oh, okay. uh, so this can help you up to a certain thickness you mm. get uh, because you get diminishing rep uh, returns. Yeah, returns on the thickness yeah. yep okay so you can do some shielding with that now uh, just one more thing on the total dose the data sheet says it'll survive up to this dose what does that mean it'll still function to all the specs up to that dose yeah this could and be then another way it's not guaranteed yeah but you don't know what specs will fail do you Exactly. You just it it's just don't go there. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So this Cross is your fingers and right. this is for example one of the right. uh, why some of the uh, space grade stuff is uh, mm. is lower weighted in frequency for example than uh, than the 
regular commercial part. All right, single. Uh, yeah. The single event. Single, yeah. So, so single there's a event. whole group of uh, what's called single event effects. And where do they? Where's where's the source for the total dose radiation? So is this yeah. what what sort of space radiation is it? Where's it coming from? So it's, um, those are the the low energy uh, electrons mostly, and so uh, they're the cosmic rays. Uh, no, uh, the no. cosmic rays are coming from outside the solar yep. system. Oh, uh, so we're talking the, about solar. The sun, so, yeah, radiation from the sun. Yeah, okay, yeah. right, essentially, yeah. Got it. And um, is that for both the for, for the dose and for the single event? So radiation. Yeah. So the um, the the so it depends on what you're talking about. Very right. Are. So um, so you have the the sun, which provides you with plenty of uh, protons mm -hmm. and uh, some ions. Yep. Um, and um, then it gets trapped in the Van Allen belt, and then you get some uh, some electrons. Which are trapped there, um, and uh, so and it's the just a soup of yeah particles like, flowing around. And if you're flying in that or yeah. through it, then you're then you have to deal with it. You have to deal <laughs> with it. <laughs> and there's awesome. also an interesting spot on Earth which is called the uh, South Atlantic Anemone, which uh, if you fly through, there is a, col a collection of what is it, protons, I guess. Um, interesting. Yeah. So it's a uh, in the uh, in the northeast of uh, South America. <laughs> Very interesting. There you yeah. go. So you don't want to live there. Yeah. No. no. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, so we, we don't, we don't right. attempt to fly through that. Okay, example. excellent. Anyway. Right, so the single So the single event effects are uh, is a group of, um, of effects that you can have with, uh, with high energy particles. So the total cosmic, dose... Now we're talking about cosmic rays. When people think of yeah. space radio, they probably think of cosmic rays. Oh, and my phone just stopped working. Must be a cosmic ray. Bit flip, you know. Yeah, yeah. Kind yeah. of. But, but yeah. The, um, actually, the sun produces some high energy particles as well. Okay, so, uh, right. Got there's, it. there's a good source as well. Yep. So you have the low energy particles, which are for the total dose, and Got the it. high p energy particles. It's the energy which, difference which differentiates yeah. the two types. Got yeah. it. And okay. the single event effects are... Um, you have the single event latch up, which is um, that. Uh, yep. SCR latch up. Yeah. Uh, SCR latch up will typically destroy your chip. Uh, it depends what? on how quickly you're able to to uh, to switch it off. For uh, to switch it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you have the um, you have the latch up if you so which can destroy your, the transistor, yep. for example, if you are not switching it off uh, quickly enough, and mm -hmm. you're not you need to switch it off and remove the energy as well. Yes. Um, yep. So not just switch it off, but really put it to ground, uh, so, so to speak. And, um, Which is why filtering on your power supply can be bad because it's got a lot of energy in the bypassing and it can keep dumping energy. And if you're, oh, I've switched off my power supply, no, you haven't. <laughs> yeah, or exactly. your bypassing is still supplying a big gulp of energy yeah, that can yeah, destroy yeah. your transistor. Yeah, right? exactly. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so that is, um, that is one source. And uh, the, the interesting thing about the single event latch up is that if you're... Um, if your process, for example, allows for a lower voltage, mm. you're less susceptible to um, so single event latch up. You're less susceptible. Yes. I would have thought lower voltage would be worse. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah. Interesting. And so some of the newer processes are, uh, are less susceptible to single event latch ups than the previous <coughs> ones. Because they're also, running at 1.1 volts or 0.8 volts core voltage yeah. or something stupid. And uh, silicon yeah. insulators are, for example, also um, uh, very immune to that. Yeah. So this is a okay. very, very rough uh, thing. Right, so it can cause latch up. What's the next problem? Yeah, bit so flipping. Yeah, bit flipping is uh, so it's called uh, bit flipping is called single event upset. There are soft and hard single event upsets. So mm -hmm. the soft one is um, uh, you have a you have a memory cell, and um, instead of a one, you're reading a a uh, zero or the other way around. And um, if you're right over it, then uh, it's uh, it's read back to normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, the hard single event upset is. Um, you cannot write to it for you know it, it gets oh, stuck for it, a time. Right, Sometimes yeah, yeah. it annuls. Uh, yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, so the, you have to. But dealing with the so, uh, soft single event upsets, this is where um, where stuff gets really interesting because mm -hmm. this is what everyone is afraid of. Isn't it? Everyone's afraid. You've got this big die yeah. which is your DDR three memory or whatever it is, and it's got it's a massive die, big square area because it's a random event bigger the square area of the die the more chance you have exactly, of getting exactly. hit right yeah. and because it's big memory array something's going to get hit yeah. how do you deal with it yeah so this is where uh, where you start to um, choose some of the processes for example that have um, ECC uh, it's error uh, correction right. or EDUC yep. which is uh, yep. that you read and correct it um, you can but what if the error correcting circuitry gets hit you're screwed yeah <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, uh, space, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah. the thing is that uh, it's a small area compared yeah, to yeah, the yeah. memories, for totally. example. Yeah, but Murphy yeah. will get you every time. 
Yeah. yeah. The thing is, but uh, about uh, single event upset is that you can, you know, you can um, deal with it and by by having error corrections or by having uh, TMR, which means a triple, redund a triple modular redundancy. Uh, for example, if you have a in a in a processor, you have a register, you have then three registers, and then you do majority voting. Exactly. And uh, yep. and take this one, and uh, mm -hmm. um, this is how you have to. Are deal you doing with any of that in here? Um, so we, this is why, for example, we are using the Smart Fusion 2, which uh, mm. because the processor is actually having uh, eDoc for the, the memory interface. Oh, it does. It's got yes. a built in. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so there's features there yeah, that yeah. And, and, made and, it And the FPGA area has, um, right. has some ECC going on. Okay, um, got it. Uh, is it ECC or parity? Hmm. Uh, some, some error correction. And right. um, uh, the, the thing is that, uh, with PSHDL, I can do some testing about the radiation effects of the IP cores that we're developing, and so we can take their care of that. The thing is that um, you have a big area, and uh, with, mm. with, for example, many registers, and you have to know which bit is actually important. You know, right. not all bits are created equal. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah, some are more important than others. Not, yeah, yep. yeah, some of them are junk, and yep. uh, so you don't care about if they are flipped. Exactly. And so th you have to you have to know which which uh, of the bits are, for example, in the control pass, which are in the data pass. You know, in the, in the data, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if there is a instead of a 127, you're uh, encoding a 128 in a in a yep. in an image. You know, Absolutely. no one notices. Yep. But uh, in a control pass, you know, it makes a difference between turning left and turning right. Yep. So you need to uh, um, you need to make a decision on which parts you want to um, TMR to make them uh, uh, redundant against a single event upsets, right. and which parts uh, you can just ignore, for example. Dosage and single event. Is there anything else? Yeah. So you have to from a single event, you also have the single event transient, which is when you are um, having a spike uh, in your. Uh, right. In the past, for example, this, you, there is not much you can do. Either. No, right. Yeah, it's a, you, can, you have to deal with it on the on the TMR level, for example. And and you've got some software. The European Space Agency. Oh yeah, so there's written some software. Oh yeah, to so yeah, so this do is do this sort of stuff. Yeah, so there, if you want to, um, there is uh, a software called uh, Spenvis, which is uh, the uh, space environment. Blah blah blah. Can uh, anyone download this? This is a website, really. Just oh, okay. Yeah, you, right. can, you, you just go there. Watch. You can oh. register, oh, right. and uh, yeah. you you enter your uh, your orbit, and yep. um, then you can take a look and uh, see uh, what you get out of it. Right. And, uh, can you can calculate, for example, a single event upset rate? Interesting. Yeah. And it'll give you recommendations for different materials for thicknesses. Mm, no. No? no, no, you've no, got you, to you do that yourself. You're on yeah, your own. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah. So, what are you most concerned about? Passing through the Van Allen belt? Yeah, the Van Allen belt is yeah, a pain is, in the ass. Is yeah. the, how big is the? How long do you spend in the Van Allen belt? Not long. So this is the good news. Yeah. Right. Um, oh, by the way, um, from uh, from a total dose of perspective, yep. there's also some annealing effects. So ah, once you accumulated yeah, yeah. some, uh, you know, when you're passing through the Van Allen belt, for example. Yep. Um, you accumulated it's some dosage, some yeah. dosage and uh, some of it will anneal uh, depending on the temperature and, uh, and the biasing you're doing. Interesting. By the way, and also the total dose that gets deposited also depends on whether the, um, the chip, for example, was, uh, was biased. So if, uh, if you are running yeah. some application with a high frequency, right. it's more chance to accumulate more dosage than it is when it's uh, switched off. Interesting. Pesky, physi pesky silicon physics and all yeah. that rubbish quantum stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, annoying. yeah. So, you know, the quintessence of it is that um, you have to decide on uh, on how much failure you're you're, for example, willing to accept. Right. And one of the things that you need to know about um, Spenvis, for example, is um, the most of the models that are dealing with uh, the solar particles, for example, are made mm -hmm. for solar flares. Um, that doesn't. So it means that essentially, on a on a good day, um, yeah. you could have no trouble at all. Exactly. Solar flare comes up, you're screwed. Yeah. Because you don't want to design, that won't be one of your risk factors, right? You go, well, we have a 1 in 50 chance of a solar flare. We're not going to add 20 kilos weight. Exactly. To but it, but it may, for example, it may be your requirement if you're flying a mission that, that lasts uh, 20 years. Exactly. You, you know, to, the chances of having yeah, a solar yeah. flare are almost Guaran 100%. Guaranteed, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, but if, for example, for our mission duration, right. um, you know, we are not expecting any, uh, any solar flares. Um, and this is some of the trade-off right. we have cited early on that um, uh, we are designing as good as we can, but if we have a solar flare, we are fucked, and we know that. So w you wouldn't be much concerned the rover through the Van Allen, Allen belt, would you? Because I assume it's just powered down. Yeah. And it'd be it wouldn't be doing anything. So you get get some dosage, but you 
going to survive that, right? That that it's always a given. You can always guarantee that. Yeah, but right? so, so yeah, if you, it depends on how <coughs> often you pass through it, you know. So uh, mm. it depends. This depends on your trajectory. Oh which, yes, which of course, yes, because you don't. People think you just shoot straight off Earth like that. <laughs> you do, you're like <laughs> straight up. No, you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so for example, uh, one yep. of the early trajectories we had was yep. uh, you know circulating uh, about five times. Five uh, orbits. Uh, yeah. Five orbits and. Yep. Um, and then and doing then a translunar going, injection. Yeah, exactly. And, yep. I know all the. You know your. TLI you know your orbits injection. right. I'm Perfect. on the space bar. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Is it a three-part system? Because you've got the rover, mm -hmm. you've got the uh, lander, yep. but you've got the ship that takes it there. Or is the lander, no, 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 the, the, the lander, lander is the ship, right? So the lander is the spacecraft that takes yep. it there. Is that all we need to know about surviving space? Well, yeah. If you so, if you want to yeah. survive space, you, uh, for example, it's uh, it's a good way to start with uh, CubeSat stuff and uh, yep. go on from that. So uh, radiation is a much bigger problem than thermal. Yeah, the thing is that you know with, with thermal it's quite easy. You know how much uh, what uh, a yep. ship dissipates, and you need to get rid of it. Yep. Uh, but um, what you really can't tell is how much dosage uh, a ship um, is, gonna... is is able to handle uh, yep. without uh, making uh, radiation yep. tests. But that's why you buy space grade, and that's what you're paying for. Yes. So uh, there is well, yeah, there is. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's been tested, and you've got some data. You know, saying, you know how bad it is. Yeah, it, exactly. It doesn't. Be, you, yeah. you know, space grade is. Mm. So you can buy. There's a difference between radiation hard and radiation tolerant, by the way. Oh so, yes, there is. Uh, yes, radiation tolerant is a is a is usually designed for you know, you know lower dosage. Um, right. And uh, so for cubesat uh, stuff. Right. For the example. cheaper stuff. Yeah, and radiation hard is really for right. deep space missions that are geo geostationary uh, satellites, which lasts for, uh, for many many years. Ten, twenty years, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, but usually, yeah. so it's uh, occasionally it's it's a bit of a rip off because you you just get the same ship. Uh, <laughs> you say yeah, exactly, with a different test with a, report. Yeah, with yeah. a yeah with a different uh, test report, you know. It's, so <laughs> that's brilliant. 